All right, so in problem 22, it's talking about a function that's continuous, and it says the average rate of change on the closed interval from six to nine is negative three halves. And it's saying for C between six and nine, there's no value of C such that F prime of C is negative three halves. Of the following, which must be true? Um, so right off the bat, I can probably write, I mean, I, I can recognize it obviously, but, um, but, um, you probably will recognize this if you, you know, then, you know, studying. <laughs> um, and this is basically going to deal with the mean value theorem, which essentially says that if a function is continuous and differentiable on an interval, and um, you're going to have a value in that interval so that the slope will be the, you know, that there will be some slope with that will be the same with an interval as connecting the endpoints. So um, let me just do it. It'll, it's basically, let me just write it, write it out. So it's F prime of C equals S of B minus S of A over B minus A. So you should be familiar with that or should look um, familiar. So um, the conditions is that it has to again be um, differentiable and continuous. It says it's continuous, but um, if this is not gonna, if, this, if there's no value of C, then um, it can't, it has to be E because then F is not differentiable on that. It probably has, that means it probably has some weird, um, it could have some like weird cusp like that. Um, something, you know, something where, you know, the, the, remember the right hand and left hand slopes don't equal each other. So there you go, 22, 23. We got let f be the function defined by f of x equals 2x plus e to the x, and we're told that g of x is the inverse function of f for all x, and that point zero one is on the graph of f. What is the value of g prime of one? Okay, so it's it's going to be helpful for you to um, just remember the inverse derivative. If g and f are inverse functions of each other, then g prime of x will be equal to one over F prime of G of X. I mean, you can technically derive this, you know, you know but, but it's gonna take more work, you know, it's gonna take more work and more time. So just memorize this um, because it's, you know, it's gonna save you a lot of frustration. But anyways, so basically we just, we just have to kind of, you know, fill it in and work from this. So let's see what we got. So we've got, some, um, so we want to find g prime of one, right? We got to find g prime of one. So g prime of one is going to be one over f prime of g of one. Now that'll be then one over g of one. If f and g are inverse functions, that means that g of one will be zero because f basically is on the graph of f. And then remember, G undoes F. So instead of going from zero to one, G is gonna go from one to zero. So then you're gonna, you're gonna have F prime of zero. This G of one will be zero. So then we just have to find the derivative function of F and then plug in zero for X. Let's, let's find that. So F prime of X will be two plus E to the X. And so then f prime of zero will be two plus e to the zero, which is just two plus one, which is just three. And so this will just be one over three. And so the answer will be b. All right, so we got <clears throat> 24. Function g is given by by g of x is equal to four x cubed plus three x squared minus six x plus one. What's the absolute minimum value of g on the closed interval negative two to one? Okay, so here, um, like, what will always usually, what, what would always, what will technically always work, um, as long as you got no weird functions. Um, um, that being that, as long as the function is continuous and differentiable, if you want to find the minimum or maximum value, you remember, remember, you just got to take the derivative 
find the critical values of the derivative and just test those derivatives. Find what the values of the function are at those derivatives. Sometimes they'll take a little more work um, and it might be faster to use the first derivative test. But um, sometimes when, um, if you're like in a problem and you, you're not sure what the function looks like, I just recommend going for that because it'll probably save you more time overall. So let's just go through it that way. We'll just take the derivative of g. g of x will be 12x squared plus 6x minus 6. We find where this could be 0 or undefined. It's not going to be undefined anywhere. We need to find where it's 0, where the zeros are. So we're going to set 0 equal to that. And let's factor out a 6. So we'll get 6 times of 2x squared plus x minus 1. 0 will be a 6 times of 2x. Let's see. That'll be minus 1 plus 1. So we'll get 2 zeros are here. So x plus 1 equals 0. So we have one, one critical value at x equals negative 1. And the other one will have 2x minus 1 equals 0. And we'll have another critical value at 1 half. So then what we can do is just test the function values at x equals one half, negative one, but also test the endpoints and then, then just compare. So I would basically look at g of negative two, g of negative one, g of one half, and then g of one. And then whatever one it gives me the smallest value is gonna be my absolute minimum on this closed interval. All right, so g of negative two, Four times negative eight plus three times four minus negative two, so plus the twelve plus a one, so negative thirty two plus twenty four plus um twenty, so negative seven. Uh, g of negative one, that'd be four times negative one plus three times negative one squared, so just three times one plus six, because negative six times negative one is positive six plus one, so negative four plus three, negative one, this will give me six. G of one half, one half cubed, one eighth, four eighths, so four eighths plus one half squared, so plus three fourths minus six over two plus one, so one half plus one three fourths, so one fourth minus three. Minus three minus two, so it'll be like negative one point seven five. And again, you don't have to actually find the exact value, especially if they're clearly apart. We can see that that's not going to be close to negative seven. And then g of g of one, four times one plus three times one minus six times one plus one, four seven, eight two. Okay, so we can already tell negative seven will be our absolute minimum.